Good morning, Trish here in Divine Journey Yoga. This practice today comes straight out of chapter 11 from Dr. Lauren Fishman's book called Yoga for Osteoporosis. This practice focuses on balance. So let's get started. We are gonna begin with our legs stepping wider and wider apart. And you might just warm up a little bit, add a little side lunge to that, maybe a little hula hoop, just to make sure your hips are not completely cold when you start this practice. A nice time to do it would be after a morning stretch or a morning walk when your legs are nice and warm and you can use your muscles in the way that they're meant to be used. A little bit of side stretching. And as you feel a little more ready, you'll step into your nice wide angle pose and turn your right toes out. We're gonna use a chair for a couple of the poses, so I have it right here by me. We'll begin to bend into that right knee, making sure the knee is over the ankle. And then we're going to bring the right forearm down to the thigh and the other arm can either stay at your hip or up in the air. And we're going to take five deep breaths here. Dr. Fishman says that it's been proven bone begins to build after just 10 seconds, which would be about two breaths. But poses like these that are fairly stable, you have the opportunity to go a little deeper, hold a little longer and be able to build bone a little more. Maybe one more breath. And you can bring the top arm down, place the hand on the thigh and push yourself up, straightening the knee, turning the toes forward, take a moment. We only have a few very simple cues for all of our poses today. And that is breathe naturally, squeeze the muscles gently to engage those bones and lengthen and extend. Go ahead and turn the other toes out. Begin to bend into the knee, the forearm floats down to that thigh and the arm, the shoulder rolls back as the arm chooses where you would like it to go. Settle in. Sometimes I like to make a mudra with this other hand. Anything will do as you just breathe and remember natural breathing, squeezing the muscles to the bones, just gently, you don't have to squeeze super tight. And then begin to lengthen out through the spine, down through the legs, opening the arms, expanding. One more breath. Slowly let that hand come down, press into the thigh, turn the toes forward and slowly step your feet together. Right up into mountain pose and take a breath, just noticing how you feel, feeling the soles of your feet. We're moving toward half moon. So I'm just gonna turn my toes. This is where I'm gonna use my chair. I want the chair to be the right distance away, but you don't know what that is until you get into the pose. So I choose to just point my toes in the direction of the chair, the knee in the direction of the toes. As I start to bend that knee and bring my hand down to the chair, the other hand will stay on my hip. As I feel steady, I'll start to straighten my bending knee, my standing knee and start to lift that back leg up. And this might be far enough, if I'd like to, I could lengthen the arm connected to the handle on the chair. This is quite a balance. I could also bring the elbow down to the chair, lift that back leg up just a little higher and maybe add the other arm. We just need a big breath here. Bending the standing knee first as the back leg floats down and we stand up. Very nice. And we'll switch the chair to the other end of the mat. You can also, of course, use a table, a bed, a couch, anything that you feel will help stabilize you in this pose. Also, it's lovely to have a wall behind you so you can lean back on that anytime. As you feel good and balanced, you will begin to slowly stand, making your way into the shape, finding that spot that doesn't move on the floor. That's another key part of our balance. And take a big breath. Squeezing those muscles, expanding outward. And settling back to the floor. Rocking your hips, very nice. We are gonna go ahead and set the chair aside. We're not gonna need that for the rest of our poses, but it is really, really nice to have it for that half moon shape. Next pose will be a long lunge. So I'm gonna start at the top of my mat in mountain pose. Hands to the hips and I'll just step back with one foot 
a little farther than halfway down the mat. I want to stay up on my, the ball of my foot, on those toes, heel in the air, and front knee begins to bend. And as you start to feel that pinching or tightness in the low back, allow yourself to lean on a diagonal as you lengthen out through that heel. You could take your hands to the thigh here or reach them forward or up in the air as we take two more breaths here. Hands come to the thigh and we step up. Knees are bent, back is flat, and then we rise to mountain pose for the other side. Take a breath. Hands on the hips, bending the knees, step back with the other leg. Find that balance. <laughs> Feel free to heel toe that front foot wider apart if you think that would help your balance a little bit. Keep that back heel up. Lean, hinging at the hips here, folding, not rounding. Take the arms forward or up, and just a couple of breaths here. Extending, engaging the muscles. and slowly releasing. Feels pretty good. <laughs> We're gonna slowly come down on the hands and knees. I like to take a little soft, supported forward fold, elbows to the thighs, maybe a few open and close of the knees. As we reach for the floor, palms come down, knees are very bent. You can step into a down dog just for a moment as a transition or stay in table for a cat cow or two. We're going to be moving into a knee down lunge. So we're just going to bring one foot forward. Keep that back knee down. I like to have my toes curled under. You can always slide a blanket under that knee as we slowly walk our hands to the thigh. And we're going to add a twist to this lunge. So I like to bring my palms together at my heart and just point the elbow across the body, opposite elbow to that front thigh. Other hand can point up. You can also just take the arms out wide in front of you. Feel that deep stretch right across here. This one we're gonna hold for several breaths. It takes about five breaths for me to pass 30 seconds of time. And I know that 30 seconds is a perfect amount of time to build that bone and muscle strength. Let's just take two more breaths here. hands come back to the floor inside that front leg so that you can step it back. You can stay right where you are, take a few cat cows, maybe a child's pose. I'm just going to turn around to the other end of the mat so I can still see you in my twist. I'm going to bring the other foot forward. Nice long diagonal from this back knee up into that hip socket. Hands can come to the thigh. We're gonna bring the hands to the heart, cross the elbow over, and settle into our twist. Natural breath. Gently squeeze the muscles to the bones and expand outward. Slowly untwist. Bring the hands to the inside of that front foot and step the foot back. Take those cat cows, feel free to take a child's pose, but we always wanna make sure if we have osteoporosis that we are not rounding that low back. Just take another breath or two here. We're moving toward our side plank. I like to come into this from a kneeling pose because I'm going to bring all my weight onto my right hand and my right knee as my left side of the body opens up and I plant the left foot in front of my right knee. <laughs> then I might use this hand to help me as I start to slide that under leg back so that I come onto the outside edge of that foot. And here I am in the side plank, just for a breath or two. Usually it feels good to have the shoulder slightly back of the wrist. You can do what feels best for you. You can also do this down on your forearm. Bring the hands forward, dropping the knees and coming down. Take your time, especially twisting that wrist. I'm gonna swing around to the other side of my mat. You can do so as well. Take another cat cow, leaning everything onto that left side of the mat, 
bringing the right foot forward this time, the back leg is going to stretch and then roll onto the outside edge as the arms go wide. Just a breath or two. Lifting those hips slightly and then bringing everything back down. Wonderful. Feel free to take some hip circles. Give yourself these little breaks in between the poses. We're going to slowly come into a seated pose. It's always a good idea to have something to sit on. I'm just going to stay flat this morning, but you can always sit up on a blanket, a bolster, a block. We're going to move into our wide angle shape here. Let's just take a few deep breaths. And then we'll bend the knees and bring them together. And we're just going to let both feet swing off to one side. That bottom foot kind of tucks under. And we'll move into our knees together twist. The knees are pretty much pointing forward. And we're going to just take our body away from our feet, turning from that middle of the body, the middle of the back. Deep breaths here. And you can stay for that five breath or anything that works for you, just letting the body settle. As you feel ready and you've been there for about 30 seconds, you'll take your hands back behind you, bring the feet back in front, take a moment, maybe a little pelvic tilt, and then just drop those feet over to the other side, let the knees come down. So one of the hips is a little bit higher than the other and that's just fine. We're just turning away from the feet. You can kind of adjust, allowing yourself to feel comfortable, but also feeling that stretch. Remember engaging the muscles, letting those bones feel that stress. releasing. Let's lean back and go into that wide angle once again. Wide legs, as wide apart as feels right for you. And this is a really important place to use that engagement. We're going to really press the backs of the legs into the floor. When I say really, I mean about 30%. Like if you were pushing at your 100%, you would get tired way too fast. <laughs> I'm going to flatten the feet, curl the toes back toward the knees, and my hands could go on my thighs or behind me. I actually like them behind me, up on the fingertips, fingers pointing back, so that I can lean my heart forward here. Press out through the feet, press forward with the heart, up with the head, back with the tailbone, and let's take three more breaths. Releasing. Let's bend those knees and slowly bring the feet toward each other. Letting the soles of the feet rest against each other. This is our cobbler's pose. If you'd like, you can take a few pelvic tilts. We want very slight movement in that lumbar spine. We don't want to be rounding, even though it sounds like it would feel so good. Open the back, open the chest, squeeze the back together and relax. Good. Let's go ahead and take the hands behind once again. Just kind of up on those fingertips, pointing them back. Open the heart. Now we've got four directions to press here. Together with the feet. Open wide with the knees. Lift head and heart and press down with the tailbone and breathe. Relaxing. You can bring the knees together, maybe round the shoulders up toward the ears a little bit, some side stretches. As we move on to hands and knees, we're heading toward our headstand pose. Now, we're not going to do headstand. <laughs> not a full headstand. It's not really safe to do that without some help, some guidance. So I recommend coming into your dolphin pose instead. So I'm going to bring my elbows right under my shoulders, let my fingers link together, there's some air between my palms 
and I'll begin to curl my toes under and then just lifting the knees. And let's play with our back here. Open the shoulder blades wide and squeeze them together and then come on down. Good, maybe a cat cow. We're just gonna do this three times. So we have two more. When you feel ready, you'll press your knees off the floor, lifting those hips, opening the shoulder blades and squeezing them together. We are really strengthening the muscles and the bones of the upper body here that don't get a lot of attention in yoga. One more time, lifting, breathing, squeezing, and coming down. Very nice. <laughs> and that does feel nice. Feels like a good warming movement for the shoulders. So I'm sitting back on my heels just for a moment. Feels good in my knees. If it does not feel good, just go ahead and come right off. Swing those legs around and we're moving toward our shoulder stand, which of course we also will not do because just like headstand, it really needs some support and some guidance. So instead we're going to do bridge pose with robot arms. Let's go ahead and roll to the side, slide down into seed pose, and then roll onto the back, bringing the knees up planting those feet where you like them for bridge. Instead of taking the hands by our sides, we're gonna bend the elbows, tuck the arms right in close to the ribs, point the fingers up like we're, we have robot hands, tuck those shoulder blades together and lift the hips. Holding here, pressing into the backs of the arms, lifting the hips, using all the beautiful muscles. This is a full body engagement pose. See if you can even use your toes. And we're gonna be here for 30 seconds or approximately that. Just a few more breaths. You can always stay longer if you feel like you're not quite tired yet. It's good to go to the point of tired, not exhaustion. Slowly settling down, you can wiggle those fingers. Feel free to rock the knees as we head toward Shavasana. I'm going to inchworm my head toward the top of the mat. You can choose to keep your knees bent or stretch the legs out. Resting is so important. If all we do is stress the body, it will literally deteriorate. If we allow it to rest, it will grow and heal. Let's just breathe together. Resting here for just about one minute, or for me, that's about 10 deep breaths. Start wiggling those fingers and toes, gently waking yourself up, rocking, bending, finding your way into gentle movement, and then over onto your side to press up to a seated position and finish your practice with that sacred seal, palms together. Gratitude for our bodies and for this practice. Namaste. If you enjoyed this practice, Feel free to check out my other Yoga for Osteoporosis videos. They will be under the playlist Yoga for Osteoporosis. And there are three chapters in Dr. Fishman's book. One focuses on bone building, one focuses on strength building, and this one was on balance building. So have a beautiful day and may we all get stronger bones.